after the Nasdaq Composite logged its worst week since June of 2022 here. And Apple, one of the index's heavy hitters, is moving to the upside this morning. The tech giant will kick off its annual iPhone event in Cupertino, California, later on this afternoon. And so for more on what we can expect from the event, we've got Bob O'Donnell, Technologist Research President and Chief Analyst here. Great to have you here with us, Bob, to kick off Thanks, the show. Uh, first and foremost, let, let's start with the big news that is Apple expected to come later. Later today, new iPhones, Apple Watches. What is the product here, especially as it's usually the smartphone, that is expected <laughs> to take the cake here, at least for consumers and investors that are paying close attention to where the stock may move thereafter? Well, you know, the, brand, the thing is, and I've been going to these Apple events for years and years. I'll be there again uh, this morning. It's always been about the phones, right? The fall launch event is the big phone launch event and people get excited about that, or at least they used to. The challenge is we're in an era when a lot of these iPhones look the same. This year's new versions are expected to be incrementally better, but not hugely different. I think honestly, a lot of the focus is going to be on the Apple intelligence AI features because that's the exciting area. Like what is Apple doing here? Of course, they announced some of this at their WWDC conference earlier this year. But the question is, how does it get implemented? What's it like to use? You know, does Siri actually become smart? And this is all important because Apple has said, look, if you want to use these new capabilities, you're going to either have to have an iPhone 15 from last year or the new iPhone 16. And of course, a lot of people are sitting on 12s and 13s and 14s. And so the question becomes, if this these software capabilities are compelling enough to get those people to upgrade their iPhones, that's the market we're in these days. It's an upgrade market, right? That's where all the sales happen. So that's what I'm certainly gonna be watching, but there are implications about this because most of the focus, of course, has been on the US implementations of these. We're not even seeing it happen in Europe, let alone China. And of course, there's a lot of questions about what AI capabilities Apple and others will be able to bring to China. So lots of questions, lots of interest, lots of excitement, but. It's kind of more of a software focus, I believe, uh, in the end. Bob, how much of that excitement do you think has already been built into the stock or priced in? It's a great question, Sean. I mean, I, to be honest with you, because of what I just said, most of this stuff, you know, everybody knows what's going to be happening. I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll surprise us. Sometimes they do. I haven't gotten the sense that may, would be the case. You know, and, and obviously they're going to have new watches, which has been a growing part of Apple's business, the AirPods as well, rumors maybe of an iPad mini, but again, that doesn't make or break things. So most of this stuff I think is built in. The question will be, you know, has Apple cracked the nut on the ability to make AI useful for a lot of people? We've seen Google and Microsoft and others introduce AI focused features and they're kind of fun but they're not something you're gonna use every day. And in my opinion, you know, Apple's really good at UI. Can they be the ones that start to say, hey, here's how you integrate AI and normal people go, oh, wow, this is what I gotta have. And so that's the part that could be the upside surprise. Yeah, to partially quote Taylor Swift this morning here, Bob, I mean, it's me, I'm the problem, it's me. I have an old Apple Watch, <laughs> I have an old 12, uh, Pro Max iPhone, I haven't felt the need to upgrade. What percentage exactly. of the install base, though, do you think needs to be so enamored, so fascinated by some of these new features that might not come till later this year based on some of the, the OS delays that we had heard about? What percentage of that install base needs to be able to and to upgrade and take on new price as well in order for this to flow through to Apple's financial performance? Uh, it's a good question, Brett. I honestly, I don't know the exact percentages. I mean, there are a lot of numbers being thrown out or out there, but you know, look, it, we are in this era of four-ish to five-ish year phone cycles, just like you're describing, which would imply, you know, there is only about 20% that have an iPhone 15, which means there's this huge 80% chunk um, that are part of what they want to see move. Now, they're not going to get all of that, obviously, and I'm not sure that this is a super cycle year that some people said, because again, we're not seeing a whole lot of hardware implementations. You know, there's no foldable iPhone yet. Eventually, I'm sure there will be, but we're not there yet. That will trigger huge changes. So, you know, it's again, it's going to be an interesting thing to watch. And again, the other question, as I said, is the um, 
the other international side of this and what happens, uh, how they deploy this in the EU and various countries there and any regulations, of course, that may occur. And, and that's not just for Apple, but for everybody. So, you know, I, I think it's interesting, but I think it's more of a long term play. One of the problems I think we're seeing in general with the market here in you guys chat is people are expecting this, that all this AI stuff is like, bam, immediately going to impact everything. It's like, guys, that's not the way this works. And it's not, it's going to take a while. Uh, so, you know, it's a question is, pe do people have patience in the market? They typically don't. So, you know, we are where we are. Bob, another big event that's taking place in, in the tech world today or starting, I should say, is Google's antitrust trial. And of course, the focus of this trial is on Google's advertising business. I'm curious, just from your perspective, talk to us about what's at stake and the significance of this trial, maybe some of the implications here for not only Google, but some of the other larger tech giants. Sure, Shauna. No, I mean, this is an interesting one. It's it's a really kind of a complex story because it's not about Google's ad business. It's about their ad selling business. So behind the scenes, and this is something we don't typically interact with, there's a big marketplace for buying and selling ads on websites and what have you. And Google has had the tools to do that. And our, the government is arguing a monopoly in that particular area. Now, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's hard to figure it all out and all the pieces, because it's not even all the ad business, it's not the ad words, it's uh, the other portion. And even if worse comes to worse, something happens and, and oh, by the way, this is all gonna take years and years and years, because that's how DOJ stuff is. Even if something happens and they have to sell off that little piece, nothing that you or I interact with, with Google would change, right? This would be the businesses that interact with and buy ads via Google, that would change. Obviously, that's important to Alphabet as a conglomerate, uh, and there's certainly a question of what that impact would be. Most of the uh, suggestions I've seen have been, you know, pretty small. All right, Bob Adana, always great to get your insight. Thanks so much for hopping on Thanks, and guys. joining us here this morning, a Technalysis Research President. Thanks so much, Bob.